Welcome to the Write the Damn Book Already podcast. My name is Elizabeth Lyons. I'm a five-time author, and I teach people how to write and publish powerful, thought-provoking nonfiction and memoir without overthinking or getting caught up in extreme overwhelm. Because your story and message matter, and it's about to become someone's very favorite resource. For more book writing, publishing, and how the heck do I move through this glitch tips and solutions, and plenty of free resources, visit publishaprofitablebook.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this next episode of Write the Damn Book Already. Okay, I have not laughed as hard during an episode, I don't think ever, as I did during this one. I had to keep moving back from the mic because I've learned in the past doing other things, not necessarily podcasts, that if I laugh, my laugh, I have a, I have a pretty loud laugh. Like I've been, there was one time when I was in Target and someone peeked their head, I was laughing, and someone peeked their head around the aisle and, and it was a woman and she said, I knew it was you. I heard your laugh. And as if that weren't embarrassing or whatever enough, it was the barista from Starbucks. Like, I know every barista within 25 miles, and apparently some of them know my laugh. So I know to back away now from the mic because otherwise it'll blow out the speakers in your car or wherever you're listening. And I had to back away from the mic so many times during this interview because Laura Bell Gray is one of the funniest people I have ever met. What is the most fun about her is that her funniness, I just made up that word, is almost surprising. You, I knew she had a sense of humor after reading the advanced review copy of her forthcoming book, Tough Titties. And the full title, now that you, you're finished laughing about that, is Tough Titties on Living Your Best Life When You're the Effing Worst. Um, I know you want this on your bookshelf, not even on your bookshelf, on your bedside table or on the coffee table in front of your couch immediately. It does not come out until June. Kill me now. But you can pre-order it. And not only do pre-orders help authors who are traditionally published, which Laura is, the book is coming out with Hachette, pre-orders help them so, 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 so much. But you're doing yourself a favor as well because you don't have to remember to order it in June when it comes out. It will just show up on your doorstep like the amazing gift that it is. Before we launch into the interview, it occurs to me that I've been talking a lot lately about my own most recent book, Write the Damn Book Already. And when I'm talking to other authors about their books, they'll start to mention books that they wrote previous to the one we're talking about. And I suddenly think, I didn't, I didn't know you had written that many books. And then I think, Maybe my audience doesn't realize that I've written other books. So I just want to briefly mention that there are two other books that I've written in the last several years. One is titled Enough, The Simple Path to Everything You Want, A Field Guide for Perpetually Exhausted Entrepreneurs. But truth be told, the subtitle could just as easily be How to Get What You Want and Be Happy with What You Already Have. So if you are someone who is feeling like you are on the go, 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 get, 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 have, 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 be, be, be roller coaster, then I would argue that you will love enough. It will show you how to thoroughly identify what you want, why you want it, how you're going to get it, and most importantly, how you will relax into the knowledge that it will come when it comes. And there are things over which you just don't have control in this life and There's something very fun about doing what you can do and then leaning back and just letting it come to you when and how it does. The other book I am always excited about is one that came out maybe 10 years ago now. It's called You Cannot Be Serious and 32 Rules That Sustain a Mostly Balanced Mom. And the reason I wrote that book was predominantly for moms, although as it turns out, many dads have read it, but it was written for moms who our moms, and also either are working full-time or trying to build a business or trying to find a life outside of being a mom because that's important to them. And these were the 32 rules that I employed and still employ to a large degree and practice employing on the daily in my own life in order to find balance. Because here's, here's the truth about balance, people. Balance is not something that we attain. It's something that we maintain. So much like riding a surfboard, which I have never done, but intend to at some point in my life, you don't just stand up on the board and then all is well and you don't have to think about anything else. It's, some, it's, a, it's a practice. It's, it's work. 
Now, it's not necessarily hard work. Once you know how you want it all to look and operate, and you can put certain rules in place and, and certain boundaries and parameters and thought processes in place that allow you to keep moving forward toward whatever it is you're going for and not feeling guilty about it, not feeling badly about it. And that's what that book is intended to help people do. Showcase some of the, the things that I've put in practice. If they work for you, great. If you think I'm an idiot, that's fine. You can tweak them. You can ignore them all together. But it was a really fun book to write. And all of the books, all three of them, are available as audiobooks as well. So if you would rather hear them read to you in my delightful voice, you can do that. All right, let's get back to Laura Belgray. Laura's book, Tough Titties, comes out in June. I knew this was going to be an incredible conversation, but I did not know just how fun it was going to be. Without any further information even needed, because you're going to get everything you need in the interview, let's just jump right in. Every single time I talk to people about your book, because it's not even, it doesn't even come out till June. And right now we're in January, right? It is available for pre-order, however. So everyone should just go out and get it so that it just shows up right on the day, right? Yes. Every time I mention to someone that I'm reading this book and I say, oh, I'm so excited. I got this, you know, this arc for this book. And of course, what the hell's an arc? And then I have to explain Mm -hmm. because we have lingo that other people don't have. They're like, is is Noah involved? I'm like, no, it's the answer. (laughs) You copy. But I tell them, you know, it's called Tough Titties and I can't even get past that. And they just burst (laughs) out laughing, (laughs) which I just find hilarious because it's, it's hilarious. Thank you. And so here's the thing. I'm very fascinated with you because as I, first of all, I couldn't put the book down, could not put it down. That's all I want to hear in life. You just made my life worthwhile. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so glad I could do that for you today. (laughs) I I find that fiction, I can barrel through, especially if it's really, really good nonfiction. I more need, um, I savor it more. Like I had uh, Linda Sievertson on the podcast yesterday Mm -hmm. and I was talking about beautiful writers. And I said, I am savoring this one. It's not something I even want to plow through because I'm really, but tough titties. I just, I couldn't stop. It it just was just so, so good. So here's why I'm fascinated with it. You know, when you get an arc, lots of times you don't have a lot of information up front. There's no back cover copy. There's no Amazon description. There's nothing really telling you or me in this case, what this book is about, who it's for, why you wrote it. Like I, you don't have any of that information. So right. you just kind of dive in. And I had a very limited amount at the time. Now I've gone down the rabbit hole but of information on you. And I <laughs> knew that you were a copywriter and had done this for a long, long time. And so I kind of expected the book to be about that. But mm-hmm. you did the exact opposite of what I call a, an air quotes, a should book, which uh-huh. is like, like I... I teach people how to write amazing copy. And for the record, your emails are ridiculous. They're so good. (laughs) Thank you. They're so, so good. And I hate emails. Like I unsubscribe (laughs) like crazy. So that's what I want to really ask you about is what prompted you instead of, you know, you didn't write a book about how to write great copy. People can learn that through your courses and through honestly Mm -hmm. studying how you do it. It's just incredible. But so what was the impetus for this book? Yeah. So I, first of all, read it. I I never, I always knew I wanted to do something with writing. I always kind of knew I wanted to write a book. Um, But I also felt like I'm not good at story and and in terms of making up story. I don't see story. You know, you'd read things about like uh, John Grisham that he sees the whole story from above. He he even knows how it's going to end. I wanted to kill him when I read this. It was in the times, like in the dining section about him going to power lunches, like fancy lunches and, uh, and, and his books pouring out of him. I didn't have that. And then I read David Sedaris. And these were short stories about his life. They're essays. I didn't know they were called essays, but I was like, that's the kind of writing I want to do. And it's always been the kind of writing I wanted to do. And I found a way to make money from it through my emails and um, other stuff, primarily emails and blog posts. And this, like the book, even, even the emails were not 
entirely the kind of writing I wanted to do. There was still more in me that you can't fit in an email. I want to tell this whole story. I want to tell this whole chapter of my life. Um, and so that was the book that I wanted to write. And I knew that the should book, I'm so glad that you bring this up because it's been a big theme for me in choosing yeah. to write this book and selling the book. I, I knew the should book would be a marketing book, a book on copywriting, or some form of self-help book because personal development, you know, goes hand in hand with the online world, right. with business, et cetera, um, that would have like sidebars at the end of each chapter or your next steps now go, you know, or a writing prompt. And I was like, I'd rather die. That's not the kind yeah, of book I was going to say, having read the book, that is so the opposite of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not trying to tell anyone how to live with this book. I, if it gives you anything, any sort of takeaway, it might be a feeling where you have permission to be who you are, permission or permission to show who you are. Maybe it opens up some sort of writing channel for you. It's not a writing book, but so I think some people will feel like, I want to talk about this too. I want to talk about myself in this way. So I am happy if it helps people in that way, but I did not want, and of course I had to make every story in it, every chapter arc to some sort of meaning. Otherwise it's just mm -hmm. anecdotes, right? And that was that was challenging for me because there were a lot of stories in there that I would tell, you know, at a party and people were like, you have to put that in your book. That's such a good story. And then when it was down on the page, I'd realize, or my editor would note, what are you trying to say here? Like, what is this about? What is the point of this? What is the point of view yeah. here? It's an anecdote. It's a great anecdote, but what's the point? So you do have to work that in. But as far as the shoulds of it, as far as the actionable steps and takeaways and all that spoon fed to the, I had no interest in doing that. And um, that made it a little bit challenging to, or a lot challenging to sell because first, you know, agents would say, first of all, uh, a book of funny essays. Um, you don't really have permission to write in this market unless you're famous. Right. And so, oh, so several agents turned me down saying like, I see a lot of promise in this, uh, love your exploration of failure. And it's really fun. I love the sample chapters. Um, but I just don't see this selling because, mm -hmm. you know, you, no offense, but you're not Beyonce. Uh, it's like none taken. Um, <laughs> not Beyonce. I accept your point. <laughs> And, uh, and then I did get an agent and it was someone who promised me that she would not make me, she would not let anyone make me write that kind of book that in selling oh. it, she would let me stick to my guns. She would stick to my guns for me. It's my surrogate to write the kind of book I wanted to write. And sure enough, like she told me to, um, you know, she gave me a couple of dates in, I think it was in September, uh, she was like, put or October set aside these three days, we're going to have meetings with editors, with publishers. Um, and so I blocked so you them actually off. went to those with yeah. her? Zoom, you, Zoom. Okay. They were, there were going to be Zoom meetings. And okay. so she, you know, sent the book out. She like sent the book out and I kept waiting to hear from her, like what times these meetings would be. And, uh, she said, we have interest from this one editor. Um, she wants to see more of your writing, wants to see your emails that you like because um, you talk about your emails and the proposal and would love to see some of your articles. So I sent those and they're like, okay, she's interested. Schedule that one in for Friday X date. And I kept waiting for the more to flood in. I was like, I'm, you know, waiting to book up that calendar with meeting, the back-to-back -back meetings. I'm ready for the auction ready for the bidding war. Right. And she was like, yeah, well, it's really, um, it's this one editor and we're really excited to meet with her. And, you know, the others uh, liked your proposal very much, but they asked if it could be a marketing book or asked if you'd be willing to make it instructional or how to, sure enough. And uh, she knew the answer was no. So yeah, one, one editor one offer and that that's all it takes is one 
is and one. She, the editor bought it. Um, and yeah, so now it exists. Now it's a book. So what was your feeling? You know, I talked to people a lot who are wrestling with um, trying to find an agent, having been turned down, or Mm -hmm. perhaps they found an agent, the agent can't find an editor. And now they're kind of, what do I do? Right. Do I keep, do I keep going? Do I keep pursuing? You kind of had that question answered for you because you found this diamond in the rough agent who said, you know, Laura, your way is my way. My way is your way. Mm -hmm. Like we're in partnership, but for people, how long do you think you would have or could, and this is obviously a hypothetical, but could have kept going without deciding to maybe, did you ever consider doing it on your own or hybrid publishing or something like, or was it always traditional or, or not, nothing? I wanted the, I wanted to be published. I wanted to be a pub, like, this okay. is, this is a vanity project. Let's make that clear. Um, I I wanted the prestige of being published. And so, no, that didn't occur to me. Giving up didn't occur to me. Um, You know, it felt like a lot of rejections. In truth, it wasn't that many. I mean, I don't know. It might have been like a month or so of submitting and hearing back and hearing hearing no's. And I tried every connection and every connection's connection, um, all of them. And... It was a little dispiriting, but I also knew the story of every of most successful authors that that's how it yeah. goes that you get lots of rejections before you get a yes, and um, especially if you're not famous to start with or discovered from you know an article that you wrote. So, yeah, so I di- I didn't let it get me down too much. I just kept trying, and um, this the agent that I got was through a connection. So some of them I emailed blind or for instance, I, I looked up uh, Sam, Samantha Irby's. I would I would troll people's like crawl through their acknowledgements and see who their yep. agent was. And through, um, <laughs> so I, I found Samantha Irby's agent on Twitter and uh, he's this weird guy who was like, yeah, sure, send me, I messaged him and he's like, yeah, sure, send me a query. Um, so I did and he was like, you know, it's, I, I like it, but here's, the, here's some issues with it. Um, and it was a kind no. And uh, right. I, so I did a lot of investigation, a lot of detective work to find agents, um, not just in publishers marketplace, but also like just through acknowledgements and then social media. And uh, there was one agent I was interested in and I was look I looked her up on social media and saw that she followed my friend Farnoosh and this Farnoosh mm-hmm. Tarabi um who's a fellow podcaster and uh author and she uh, I said Farnoosh do you know this person are you are you f- actually friends uh and she's like yeah do you want an introduction so she introduced me so the like that stalking um in the people's follow lists paid off that was the agent that I ended up getting. And it the connection really made a difference. Do, and do you feel like, like just your determination, like you said, it was a vanity, it was this way or no way. Like you knew that. Yeah. And and you believed obviously in the way that you were going about it. Because I think many times when people get an opportunity to work with an agent or with an editor, and that that individual says, you know what, we could do this if. Right. Mm-hmm. If you switched it to be a marketing book or, oh, my gosh, Laura, if you wanted to write a marketing book, I can get you a seven figure advance or whatever yeah. comes out. Mm-hmm. Did you ever feel the pull to switch it at all? Or or were you just very yep. firm? From OK, well, you know what? That's a lie. There were times when I was writing it when. So my, my uh, a friend of mine started off also with a the premise was a book of essays, personal essays. And that's what she was excited to write. And her editor, she sold it. And then her editor did, it was kind of a bait and switch. Her editor was like, no, this is going to be instructional and you're going to have to do takeaways at the end of each chapter. And I want to know what you're leading them to do. You know, what are the takeaways for every chapter? She was, And my friend was a little tortured by it, um, but she accepted it. She was like, you know what? Okay. Like she, you know, cognitive dissonance and all that. She convinced herself that like this was the way to do it. And she was like, you're for, you know, self-help is hot. This is going to sell, et cetera. And then I'll get to write the book I want. You know, no, I'll write I this book. I'll write this yeah. book 
as much of it the way I want as possible. And she did. She did yes. a fabulous job. It's an incredible book. It's got her voice all through it. I mean, they're, it's very entertaining, compelling, et cetera. Um, but it's still an instructional, it's like self-help book. And um, when she was doing that, when she was telling me why it was a good thing, her editor changed it. I was like, oh, maybe I should be, maybe this book would be so much easier, actually, if I had those constraints, if I had to write to that, to some sort of self-help or instructional premise and make it interesting. Yeah. I do do well with that. And I'm like, oh, and maybe it would sell better. And of course it would be integrate better with my business. And uh, I can put a code in the back and lead people to my website, to a URL, to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I did have a little bit of that. And that happened when I was struggling the most to write the book and make it a cohesive, like I was in it and I was overwhelmed by all the stories I wanted to tell and feeling like I can't do this. I w- th- I know it's the kind of book I want to write, but maybe I'm not good at this. Maybe it's, maybe it sucks. Maybe there's too, I have too much so to say. Funny. <laughs> Which is hilarious because you, you, you do a booming business, right? right? Through talking mm-hmm. shrimp, teaching yeah. people how to write from yeah. their own voice. I mean, mm-hmm. I hear you. This is the first time we've actually talked live. Yeah. But I it's weird because I hear your voice in the book and I hear your voice in your emails. Right. So, you know, Thank you, you it's like you walk your walk, you teach what you do. And so it's so fascinating to me to hear that you too get, you know, when you're writing it. I mean, was that the hardest part for you, do you think, is narrowing down what you wanted to say and what you didn't want to say? Or was it, yeah. was there a level of vulnerability that was different? Because there are some vulnerable stories. I mean, there are oh. some stories in the book. Hell yeah. Including, yeah. you know, blowjobs I gave in the early 90s. Uh, <laughs> that one was There's really easy for me. Blowjobs, right? It might be the longest chapter in the book. Um I, yeah, th- that was actually really easy for me to write because it was in such, <laughs> I shouldn't say blow by blow, but, or bite by bite, but it is, well, uh, I give up. Now. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was easy to structure. And then, but other chapters were harder to structure because I'm like, do I put all these stories together into one chapter? Like there's a chapter called Boys Don't Like Me. And originally it was just one chapter, you know, where I'm on the beach with these, you know, with this guy in like sort of a foursome, but not really because I'm the one left out like on the sand um, and the other girls are on the towels. And my editor was kind of like, this is fun, but it, it's, uh, you know, it, what is the, what is the point of it? It needs more meat to it. She's like, why don't you combine all the stories of boys not liking you into this or the story of this other boyfriend gone wrong, you know, that kind of stuff. And so cramming those all together, I was like, how is this structured? I tried it so many different ways. I I wanted to give it flow. I wanted it to feel easy to read and not all shoehorned together. And that was stuff that I don't deal with in my emails. My emails are one-offs, one little nugget that turns into a story. Um, and it doesn't have to be a, a long story. It can be a nugget of story. And that's all that an email requires. And like, I complained about this. I got or carped about it to every one of my friends because I was going through so much resistance and struggle. And I would say to my friend, Susie, um, you know, uh, I'm just having so I wish I could just like channel the me that I am when I write an email into this and it would be so easy. And she's like, you know, it's, isn't it just a bunch of emails with a spine? And I was like, yeah. oh, maybe it is, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's a lot more yeah. constructed than that. And it does have to be more polished and come to more bigger ahas or just have have bigger arcs to it. Um, there's a lot more expected when you pick up a book than when well, you open I, an email. And I think I think that's so that's a really interesting point because I often talk with people who are they have no problem creating posts for social media. So they'll say, yeah. Liz, I have nothing to say. And I say, that's a lie. You have a ton right. to say. I say, yeah. watch your social media. You, it, it's constant and it's not fluff. I read right. your emails, they're not fluff. But there's something about translating, you mm-hmm. know, that little, like a little blip. And what I think is so interesting, you have had some emails come out in the last couple of weeks because. Marie Forleo has her time genius uh, mm-hmm. 
program going on, right? And yeah. so what's interesting, and this is a huge, this is a compliment to be clear, every time I get an email from you right now, I'm 94.2% sure it's about Time Genius uh-huh. because that's what's going on right now. Yeah. I still open it. Because I'm so fascinated with how you introduce it and the story that you tell about your own experience with managing time. And this morning's was so funny because it was about your husband and emptying out the cupboards. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, you 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 bring in dialogue and stuff that's just, I was like, I I've been here. I feel like Laura has been a fly on the wall and seen what's gone on in my own life when people are unloading cabinets and they find headphones from 1981 and think I might use these someday. And you're like, <laughs> but you do it so well that before I know it, we're in a promo. And I don't know, like, oh, here we are, we're in a promo. But taking that, so you're brilliant at that and taking Thank that you. and and then expanding upon it yeah. so that to your point, it does flow. I never thought of in reading Tough Titties, I never thought of it as a series of essays. It, it feels like a memoir to you. Is that what it you think? Does. Like it feels it like what? Feels yeah. Like, yeah, to me, what I took away from it, and, and I'm just one person, but it felt like I could see where you, a reader might think this is a big collection of essays that all leads to the same point, mm-hmm. ultimately. Um, or or leads to a point in time, one and or mm-hmm. the other. But yeah. to me, it was just a collection of all the myriad experiences that you've had where your mindset was the exact opposite of like, <laughs> go, 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 get, 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 hustle, hustle, yeah. hustle. And I love that because I'm so over that. Yeah. I'm so over yeah. it. So even sometimes when I read your Instagram posts and you're talking about, you know, something anti-hustle. If Mm -hmm. I worked hard that day, I think, oh shit. (laughs) (laughs) I did the hustle thing today. (laughs) So it does, all this to say, I think for me, it did give me permission. And it, it will give other people permission to say, you don't have to, whatever you're looking to achieve, you don't have to follow the crowd. You don't have to do what everybody else says you should do. Yeah. Um, you can just do, do you, and even yeah. feel like, oh, you know, your, your stories of working in the, being in the bar and going back. I mean, it was just all like, oh, this is, it was refreshing. It's refreshing. Thank you. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because I also feel that if like, when you say you hustled all day, I'm like, good for you. I wish I felt like hustling. So I'm not anti-hustle. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I, I cannot push myself to be that motivated go-getter that other people sometimes, a lot of other people naturally are. And Mm -hmm. I've had moments, and you've read this in the book, where in time where I've discovered a kind of work that actually comes easily and I love doing and I get involved and absorbed in, I'm like, oh, I'm a workaholic now. And it's the most joyful thing ever. Because like, I always wanted to be a workaholic, but I can't, I couldn't be because I hated work. (laughs) So, right. I'm all for, um, I like for myself, I don't like doing work. That's hard. I don't like doing hard things. I like going hard on things that are easy. That's how I, that's how I I love that going (laughs) hard on things that are easy. That's a bar. I like that a lot because, (laughs) you know, I don't consider myself a hustler. I have hustled. I have, um, you know, work smarter, not harder. I definitely worked harder, not smarter. Like I, I made my business at one point in time, extremely complicated because that made me feel like I was running a real business. Like if you have 8,000 right. categories in QuickBooks, surely you are successful. <laughs> Meanwhile, my accountant was ready to fire me. You know, it was like, you don't need to break this down office supplies into paper clips, three ring binders. Like the, the IRS doesn't care. We just can call it all office supplies. But what, where I started to really struggle myself, and this is what I wrote about in when I wrote Enough, was this idea that there was being propagated for a while that we all had to have a morning routine. That was one of mm-hmm. the big ones. Like, you've got to get up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Ugh. And, you know, and do a I, cold I think you plunge. Said my Monday, oh, forget about it. And I think <laughs> you had said, my miracle morning is getting up before nine. Yep. <laughs> right. And I was yep. like, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> that is it. Yeah. Um, that's how I'm made. At 5 a.m. I can't even function. I can't at all. And I, I think that there are a lot of women, this is what I hear the most so, or see on social media that so many women get their self-worth from being busy, from being scheduled back to back and having lots of to-dos and checking them off. And I don't. First of all, I, I derive no self-worth from being busy at all. From accomplishing things, sure. But um, you know, if I look at my day and it's nothing but blank space, that is a thrill for me. I, that no point do I feel guilty about that. I hear people, women saying like, uh, sometimes I feel guilty for resting. And there's the, the like a big movement of like, you know, resting doesn't make you lazy. Well, what if it does? What, what if being <laughs> lazy is fine? Uh, some of us are yeah. just built like that. And when I was writing the proposal, you know, and thinking about how to position this book, I, I'm like, it's, who's this for? I think it's for people, women who maybe they love Glennon Doyle's book, Untamed. They mm. might love it, but maybe they also feel, you know, and Untamed tells you to be like the wild cheetah you are born to be, or like running through the jungle, un, Untamed. And I'm like, but some of us are not made of cheetah. I am not made of cheetah. I am made of sloth. <laughs> I wish people could see me right now. I am all about the sloth. The sloth is my spirit. What do they say? My spirit. Yeah, we animal. can't say spirit animal anymore. Can but, we? Not? Oh yeah. shoot. Okay. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'll cut that out. The yeah, sloth. You don't have to cut is... it out. Let's just say, let's just put it out there. You can't say spirit animal anymore. You can't but say well, it I know anymore. what you're okay. saying. Yeah. But right, like I you identify. Am so... The sloth. I so identify. And did you know how strong the sloth's abs are? They have I the strongest not. abs. I yeah, I believe so. Now don't, I mean, the world can now quote me on this, but I, I am saying I might be wrong, but I do believe they have the strongest abdominal muscles of the whole animal. Kingdom. Oh, go sloth. Then I'm not quite as sloth like as I thought. I'm not either. I have, I'm not I have either. No I'm just saying. No core. I can't, I can barely sit up. I mean, this is the thing. So I think it was maybe last week, my friend, uh, she's a brilliant copywriter as well. Her name's Parmese Yaz. She put on her social media, white space in the calendar is the new wealthy. Oh, yeah. And the number of people who like mm -hmm. liked it, loved it was it, it, telling, right? Because yeah. I think for women too, and this is verging off into a slightly different category, but there's this idea of busy, 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 busy. And I think yeah. some people, and I may have been a part of this at some point, but it, it's been a while, are afraid to slow down. Like we were mm -hmm. busy. People are busy in order to not acknowledge something. Yeah. Right. 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 To keep I mean, not them to get distracted or whatever. I, I mean, that's what your phone is for. <laughs> that Your phone is for dulling right. your emotions or um, blocking out any pain. <laughs> right. You don't need you don't need busyness in the calendar. All you have, all you need is your you phone. You don't need to get up at five a.m. Just right. open up that Instagram and start exactly. your phone. Exactly, that can derail all your dreams without having to be anything scheduled at all. I mean, what? While you're sitting on the couch with no ab muscles, learning right. that you can't walk into the spirit animal anymore. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's like all these things can happen <laughs> while you sit on your couch. Exactly. It, it can all happen from I your think, couch. Well, I think this is sort of a new, it, it's like we went so far to this side. And when I say we, I mean, there's always going to be a segment that's over here doing like the yeah, rah, rah, sure. 4am. And then there's always going to be a segment over here. Right. But but I think, I think we're starting, I pray in 2023 mm -hmm. to just give ourselves a little bit more permission. And, and I, God, I wish this book were coming out before June. I'm sure you do too, but, <laughs> yes. you know, to give people a little bit of, of, because what, what I think people want to see is someone who's doing well, whatever their definition of well is, by the yeah. way, if your definition right. of well is I make $20,000 a year. Awesome. Like yeah. we don't need to categorize it as six, seven, eight figures. If that right. doesn't even, I can't even. So doing well, happy and working hard at things that are easy. Mm -hmm. Like I think people are going to be very happy to read that story. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It, well, you know, it, it, yeah, it doesn't come out till June, but 
Well, first of all, there will be a chapter. There'll be a free chapter as a bonus when you when you pre-order the intro. Um, going to give that as an instant download. Second, so that might ease things up a little bit. Second, sure. maybe the timing is just perfect because maybe this will this book will make you feel good about taking it easy all summer. All That's summer when really, long. Mm-hmm, all summer all long. Summer long. Do you? Is there going to be an audio version? Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when that's getting recorded. I mean, I am assuming right now that they're going to let me do it. They wouldn't put it in the contract. Um, Hachette doesn't put that in the contract. Some publishers won't, I guess, just in case you suck. So, but I'm hoping (laughs) that they'll, (laughs) I'm counting on being the one to narrate it. I I wouldn't want to listen to any other voice narrate somebody's uh, book, even if they have a really annoying voice. I want to hear the author. I want to hear it narrated by the author. Yeah, I I will agree with you. With one exception, and I never, yeah. I wouldn't have thought this until, like, I full on 100% agreed with you until last week. Now I only 99.9994% agree <laughs> because I listened to a book called How to Do the, or I'm listening to a book called How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole LaPera. And it's uh-huh. not, she's not the one who reads it. And I am telling you, this narrator is incredible. Dynamite. Oh, that's, Dynamite. that's good to know. But that being said, I want to hear your voice on the on this one. Yeah, I think that if it's a first person narrative, that kind of nonfiction, yes. then you want to hear the author narrate it. Absolutely. If it's you know some sort of informational like expert book, it might be okay for somebody else too. Uh, generally, Absolutely. if I know the person, I really want to hear their voice. Though. Yes. Oh, I can't wait to hear your. So if Hachette is listening, uh, you have have one (laughs) vote at least. I'm sure you have many, many more, but I am here publicly voting for you to do the reading of that because I can't imagine anything else. Thank you for your vote. Have you done, you've, have you narrated or recorded your own? Yeah, you have. I had the last three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking notes from people. Do you have any tips to give me later or now? I I need them. I heard, Um, I've read that. Apple helps with the, here, here's my biggest, well, no, I have a couple of concerns. One is that my voice will get super tired. Uh, that uh-huh. is just exhausting. And, and it'll start to sound croaky um, mm-hmm. and age by like 40 years in an hour. <laughs> and then that's not, that is not fear number one. Fear number one okay. is what I call banana mouth. Mm. Sounding like you're eating a banana. It's the mm-hmm. most disgusting sound on earth. You know, when you like, uh, if you listen to somebody usually really old on uh, NPR, like, like yeah, they have yeah, that horrible 100%. sound. Uh-huh. Sometimes uh-huh. when I hear yeah. someone making that noise, I'm like, drink some fucking water. Do some, right. Drink some okay. water. I have so I don't want banana every, mouth. Is okay, good. Is there, is there a third? Is there a third concern? I think those are, those are the biggest ones is like fatigue okay. and then banana mouth. So uh, this is just coming from me, but for the fatigue, I Mm -hmm. cannot personally record more than 30 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. I just can't. So I will, it's a lot. People don't wreck I mean, I could sit here and talk to people for hours. The challenge is that when your ears are the only um, sense that people, sensory, you know, that's the only input, and they note it when your voice starts to get tired. And Uh it's just, it's so I keep water and or hot tea next to me while I'm recording. And I only record for maybe at most 30 minutes at a time, sometimes even just 30 minutes a day. And my last book that I is not even out yet on audio, but it's recorded, took about three weeks every day to record wow. the full audio. So that was that. The banana mouth part, <laughs> number one is the first thing. Yeah. Th- that I just said is do right. it, take your time. Tea. But the yeah. other thing, well, there's two components in my experience. One is talk more slowly than you think the reader wants, like slow yourself yeah. down. Um, but also your editor will pull. So if you're in between sentences and you have those smacking noises, they'll yes. pull, they, God willing, they'll pull that out. <laughs> they better. So that helps. But you just, good. It, it, it's, and it just takes some practice sometimes. Um, yeah. There were chapters that I would record five. I mean, God, five. And I was so sick of my own voice. Oh my God. And I was honestly so sick of my own book. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to say this again, right? But it's kind of fun. There's, 
Uh, another element of recording an audiobook that I never realized as an author until this last one, I don't know why, but you get more in touch with your own content. Mm-hmm. You learn it by heart, it's probably. Totally almost. Different del- yeah, it's a different delivery than when you're typing it or when you're typing about it, or even when yeah. you're just talking about it free flow, like when you're reading it verbatim, I don't, it, it connects you to it in a different way that I, I liked, but also I was very ready to be done. Uh-huh. I got yes. to and I was like, <laughs> hallelujah, we're done. Yeah. I no can imagine me anything. Yeah. But that's a really good upside because, you know, I'm considering right now, like, Oh, how do I talk about my book? Should I have a list of things to remember about it or stories from it, et cetera? And I, so I think that recording it, because I forget, I forget what I wrote. Uh, and if somebody's like, oh, this part of that chapter, you know, I'm like, I wrote that. Um, so I think, yeah, getting extra familiar with it will be good for podcasts and who knows, stage, whatever, whenever I talk about it with people. Well, and the other thing is, as you go through it for the 972nd time, you can even highlight things where you think, oh, I could make a quick post about this, or I could mm-hmm. do a quick live right. about this, or you know, whatever it is that you enjoy doing. It doesn't have to be anything, yeah. but it helps you to just kind of, as opposed to looking at the book and going, oh my God, I got to go through this whole thing and highlight things now that I right. want to, it just, at some point we, we want to move on to the next phase. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> move on with our life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What is the best place for people to find you? Where are you most active? Uh, at Well, there's TalkingShrimp.com. That's not where I'm most yep. active. That's just my website. And I don't post that often on it, um, but there's a lot to absorb there and some great freebies. Uh, one yeah. of them that I think your audience will really like is called Story Goldmine. And okay. that is, yeah, it's 63 surprising places to mine your everyday life for stories that sell. So it's it's all the prompt. It's kind of based on my own emails. I'm like, all right, this could be a prompt. This could be a prompt. Uh, so a lot of it is stories I've written. Um, so it's great prompts, especially for creating for emails or content, any of your social content, et cetera. Um, you know, which one I have, what do you have? The the one that I downloaded that got me onto your list Mm -hmm. subject lines. It's fantastic. Yes. They should get that too. So uh, maybe you can put those in the show notes, but that's, um, sure. Story story goldmine is at talkingshrimp.com slash story dash goldmine. And it's not okay. yet. Yeah, I've I've got to put it on the, more obviously on the website so it's findable. And subject lines you'll see right there, but it's slash subject lines, all one word. And then um I'm most active, like if you want to interact with me on Instagram. But uh, yeah. sign up with my sign up for my list for my emails because we we can interact over there. I love getting your replies. Um, I just, I love email replies and going back and forth in email, but absolutely Instagram. I'm at Laura Bell Gray. And so they can find me there, but of course, come buy my book. The URL is toughtittiesbook.com. It leads, leads, it redirects to my site, but toughtittiesbook.com. And, um, you know, anyone listening knows the story pre-orders help every book. Uh, my dream, I know it's a, you know, it's a pipe dream for someone who's quote, not famous, but uh, New York Times bestseller list. Who knows if that's within the realm of possibility, but at least I can be a bestseller in some form if I get enough pre-orders. So, right. If you can you imagine know. it, everything is possible. I, and I'll put all of this in the show notes. It, it's an, it's an, a remarkable book and I hope everybody Thank you. listening pre-orders and gets a copy and, and I'm just so glad to have found you for so many reasons, but your, your emails, it's breathed. It, it, I got to think about my, my verb tense. It's breathed new life into my, <laughs> into my own emails. Like I'm starting to find email fun again. I was on a little bit of a, of a plateau there. So I that have is everything. That. Oh, thank you for saying that. And I have, like for an author, email is everything. Like you gotta, gotta keep them. Yes. Um, so thank you for that. I'm so glad that I thank discovered you. you. I think it was through Zibby, like through you, you and every in, interviewing Zibby, uh, or yeah. maybe her interviewing you. I don't remember, but, um, Zibby's or maybe it was Joanna Rockoff. Yeah. Oh, dead Joanna. Oh God. Yes. I adore Joanna. I adore Zibby. I, the, all the connections that have come in the last six months have been so fun. 
so yeah, they're fun. so good. Um, your interviews yeah. are so much fun to listen to. I love your podcast. I love your posts. Thank I love you. when you do videos on social media. Like your reels are great. <laughs> You're giving such good tips. I love it all. So it's it's a Thank very happy you. match. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, this is your friendly reminder to follow or subscribe, leave a quick review, and share it with someone you know has a great story or message, but isn't sure what to do next. Also, remember to check out publishaprofitablebook.com for book writing resources and tips, and to see all the ways we can work together to get your book out into the world. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I'll talk with you again soon. Hey.